Hi, this is Karen Fabian, founder of Bare Bones Yoga, and I'm here to talk to you today about anatomical base cueing in yoga, specifically some cues and some actions that can help you, especially if you have some back pain in different yoga poses, specifically twisting yoga poses. And this really has to do with some cueing that is still kind of hanging around out there, even though it doesn't exactly make sense from an anatomical perspective. And this is kind of common. Sometimes there are cues that live in the vernacular of the yoga industry and they kind of get passed on from teacher to teacher. And until we really examine them a little bit deeper, we might not necessarily know that there isn't a good foundation of anatomical knowledge behind some of these cues. So let's take a look at uh, a particular part of the body and it's your sacrum. And in particular, it's your sacroiliac joint. And so here at the base of your spine is the connection between your low spine, your sacrum, and your two pelvic bones. And it's a joint and it's called your sacroiliac joint. And if you've ever had SI joint pain, which is somewhat common or can be common in the yoga world, um, you know what I'm talking about. But it's basically when that joint becomes uh, a little uh, kind of inflamed or irritated from taking movements in a way that's straining it. So let me just show you how this shows up in practice. Take a pose like twisting triangle, which is a twist. What we used to see, and I can say for myself, I've been teaching for almost 15 years, so I used to actually do this, is people would hold their lower back down. So here I have my hand right on my sacroiliac joint, and they would try to twist while holding this part of the, of the low spine steady. And so here the spine is moving, but this joint is not moving with it. And so this all of a sudden becomes the point of stability. And although you can't obviously see what's happening, I can share with you that as I turn, because I'm keeping this part of the body steady, the ligaments that connect the three bones together become strained. So instead, what can be helpful is to think about the legs as the stabilizing force in the twist and to allow your hips to actually move. And the reason students used to get concerned about this is they would say, well, one hip's gonna be higher than the other, but that's okay. What I'm suggesting is that you want your legs to be the stabilizing force. You wanna let yourself twist a little bit through the low spine so that as you're coming into the posture, you're not straining this joint here. We also see this in poses on the ground where we might do a knee down twist and if we lock down the pelvis while we're trying to twist, that same problem can happen. So when we twist, we wanna just allow our hips to roll over as well and use the upper arm, the shoulder here, and the left leg on this side as the two stabilizing pieces of the posture. So remember, in order to keep that part of the body healthy, we need to let it move with the twist. If you like anatomically based information about yoga, I invite you to click the link below, which is a special landing page I built on my website where I share an anatomy based presentation along with some other teacher downloads that you can review. So please feel free to visit my website there, visit that landing page and download that presentation. And if you have any questions, please get in touch with me by sending me an email. I hope you've enjoyed this and Talk to you soon. Namaste.